Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjaliyamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vinni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Series exam, Mechanical Engineering question paper in the topic Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. The first question from 2015 question paper, consider the following statement with regards to air conditioning system. In adiabatic saturation process, the air vapor mixer undergoes a process of constant relative humidity. Wet bulb temperature of air whose relative humidity is 100 is equal to the equal to the dew point temperature. In winter air conditioning, the process is heating and humidification. For designing air conditioning duct, equal friction method automatically reduces the air velocity in the duct in the direction of the flow. Which of the above statements are correct? There are four different combinations are given. The correct answer is option number 2 and 3. So, point number 2, wet bulb temperature of air whose relative humidity is 100 is equal to the dew point temperature. 100% relative humidity, that means the wet bulb temperature is equal to dew point temperature. In winter air conditioning system, we are heating and humidification. These are all the two processes for winter air conditioning system. Next question, there are two statements. State number one, in an air conditioned room, the ref reflective coating should be on the inside of the window. Statement number two, window pan glass is transparent to the solar radiation. So, select the correct answer here. So, both the statement 1 and 2 are true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. So, the coating, reflective coating should be inside the window and the window pan glass is exposed to the transparent to the solar radiation. These are all the, uh, both the statements are correct. Next question from 2016 question paper. Consider the following statement for appropriate context. Relative humidity of air remains constant during the sensible heating or cooling process. The dew point temperature remains constant during the sensible heating or dew cooling. The total enthalpy of the air remains constant during the adiabatic cooling. It is necessary to cool the air below its dew point temperature for dehumidification. So, which of the above statements are correct? So, among the four statements, 2, 3 are correct. 2, 3, 4, they are correct. The dew point temperature remains constant during the sensible heating or cooling process. The tot total enthalpy of the air remains constant during the adiabatic cooling. And uh, for dehumidification process, we have to cool the air below the dew point temperature. So, statement number 2, 3, 4 are correct. Next question from 2020 question paper. In air conditioning system, air may be cooled and dehumidified, dehumidified by spraying chilled water to air in the form of fine mist, circulating chilled water or brine in the tube placed across the airflow, placing the evaporator coil across the airflow. So, which of the above statements are correct? All the three statements are correct for the air dehumidification of the air conditioning system. The next question, the most suitable refrigerant system utilizing solar energy is ammonia water vapor absorption refrigerant system. Lithium bromide water, vap water vapor absorption refrigeration system, desiccant refrigeration system, thermoelectric refrigeration system. So, the correct answer is desiccant refrigeration system. Desiccant cooling system operates on the principles of ab absorption, ad adsorption of dehumidification and evaporative cooling. Such a system uses the natural working fluid and can be driven by low grade thermal energy which makes them especially useful for integrating with the solar collector system. Because of this merit, solar powered desiccant cooling system are widely recognized as a good alternative for conventional vapor compression refrigeration air conditioning system. So, the solar power is most suitable for desiccant refrigeration system. The next question from 2019 question paper, enthalpy of the moist air with normal notations is given by there are four options are given, four equations are given. The correct equation, enthalpy of the moist air, H equal to enthalpy of the air plus specific humidity into enthalpy of the vapor. So, enthalpy of the air equal to specific heat of air into temperature plus specific humidity 
Enthalpy of the vapor equal to latent heat of vaporization plus specific heat of vapor into temperature. So, enthalpy of air equal to 1.005 into temperature plus specific humidity. Latent heat of vapor is 2500 plus 1. Cp of vapor is 1.88 into temperature. So, regrouping the terms. So, H equal to 1.005 plus W into 1.88 multiplied by the temperature plus 2500 multiplied by specific volume, uh, sorry, specific humidity. The correct option is option number A. So, H equal to 1.005 plus 1.88 into specific humidity into temperature plus 2500 into specific humidity. The next question from 2021 question paper, consider the following statement for sensible heat factor. Sensible heat factor will be negative if sensible heat or the latent heat are both negative. Sensible heat factor will be negative if the sensible heat is negative and the latent heat is positive. The sensible heat factor will be negative if the sensible heat is positive and latent heat is negative. Sensible heat factor is negative if sensible heat and the latent heat are both are positive. So, which of the above statements are correct? So, we define the sensible heat factor SHF equal to uh, room sensible heat divided by the room sensible heat plus room latent heat. So, from the definition it is found that the statement number 2 and 3 are correct. If any one of the two parameters are negative then the sensible heat factor will be negative. Either the sensible heat or latent heat is negative then the sensible heat factor is negative. So, statement 2 and 3 they are the correct statements. The next question from 2014 question paper, an air conditioning system operating on a reversed Carnot cycle is required to remove heat from the room at the rate of 25 kilowatt to maintain its temperature constant at 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the surrounding being 35 degrees Celsius, the power required to operate the air conditioning system will be. There are four options given. The correct answer is 1.28 kilowatt. So, we will see how in the next slide. The temperature is T1 equal to 35 degrees Celsius which is 308 Kelvin. T2 equal to 20 degree Celsius, 293 Kelvin, refrigeration effect equal to 25 kilowatt, COP of the uh, refrigerator, uh, air conditioning or COP of the refrigerator, so this is 19.53, so T2 by T1 minus T2, so 293 divided by 308 minus 295 equal to 19.53, power of the compressor, once again defining the COP equal to refrigeration effect divided by the compressor work input, so RE by P, so COP equal to 19.53, 25 Re equal to 25 divided by P, rearranging the power equal to 1.28 kilowatt. So, the power of the compressor is 1.28 kilowatt. The next question from 2015 question paper, air is passed through a cooling coil at a temperature of minus 5 degree Celsius. If the temperature of the air drops from 25 degree Celsius to 10 degree Celsius, the bypass factor of the coil is, there are four options given, we calculate the bypass factor. So, bypass factor equal to coil temperature minus the outlet air temperature divided by coil temperature minus inlet air temperature. So, substituting minus 5 minus 10 divided by minus 5 minus 25 equal to 15 by 30 equal to 0 0.5. So, the bypass factor equal to 0 0.5. The next question again from 2016 question paper, air at temperature of 25 degree Celsius, dry bulb temperature and 80 percent relative humidity is passed over a cooling coil whose surface temperature is 10 degree Celsius which is below the dew point temperature of the air. If the air temperature coming out of the cooling coil is 15 degree Celsius then the bypass factor of the cooling coil is. So, there are four options given. We calculate the bypass factor once again. Bypass factor equal to coil temperature minus the outlet air temperature divided by the coil temperature minus inlet air temperature. So, substituting the uh, parameter. 10 minus 15 divided by 10 minus 25 equal to 5 by 15 equal to 0 0.33. So, the answer is 0 0.33. The next question from 2016 question paper, in an air conditioning plant, air enters the cooling coil at 27 degree Celsius. The coil surface temperature is minus 5 degree Celsius. If the bypass factor of the unit is 0 0.4, air will leave the coil at. So, we have four options. We calculate from the bypass factor, so coil temperature minus the outlet temperature of the air divided by coil temperature minus inlet temperature of the air. So, bypass factor is given as 0 0.4 uh, minus 5 minus T out divided by minus 5 minus 25 calculating the outlet temperature is 7.8 degree Celsius. So, the answer is 7.8 degree Celsius. 
Next question from 2018 question paper. In an, air, in an air handling unit, air enters the cooling coil at the temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. The surface temperature of the coil is minus 10 degrees Celsius. If the bypass factor of the coil is 0 0.45, then the temperature of the air at the exit will be. We have four options again. We calculate the outlet temperature from the bypass factor. So, bypass factor equal to coil temperature minus the outlet air temperature divided by the coil temperature minus inlet air temperature. So, bypass factor equal to 0 0.45 equal to minus 10 minus T out divided by minus 10 minus 30. Calculating the outlet temperature is 8 degree Celsius. The option B is the correct answer 8 degree Celsius. The next question from 2015 question paper. A desert cooler having the cooling efficiency of 70 percent reduces the temperature of the atmosphere air from 37 degree Celsius to 30 degree Celsius. The wet belt temperature of the air will be. So, there are four options given here. So, the cooling efficiency is 0 0.7, inlet temperature, drivable temperature is 37 degree Celsius, outlet drivable temperature is 30 degree Celsius. So, the cooling efficiency eta C is defined as inlet drivable temperature minus the outlet drivable temperature divided by inlet drivable temperature minus the inlet wet bulb temperature. So, the cooling efficiency is given as 0 0.7 equal to 37 minus 30 divided by 37 minus inlet wet bulb temperature. So, rearranging and calculating inlet wet bulb temperature is 27 degree Celsius. The answer D, option D is the correct answer 27 degree Celsius. Next question from 2016 question paper. The latent heat load in an auditorium is 25 percent of the sensible heat load. The value of the sensible heat factor is, there are four options given. We calculate the sensible heat factor. So, sensible heat factor equal to sensible room, room sensible heat divided by the room sensible heat plus room latent heat, which is room sensible heat divided by the room sensible heat plus 0 0.25 times of room sensible heat. Because room latent heat is 25 percent sensible heat. So, this is 1 by 1.25 equal to 0 0.8. So, the sensible heat factor is 0 0.8. Next question from 2019 question paper. During an air conditioning plant, the room sensible heat load is 40 kilowatt, room latent heat load is 10 kilowatt, ventilation air is 25 percent of the air supply. At the full load, the room sensible heat factor is, there are four options given. So, calculating sensible heat factor equal to sensible heat load divided by the total heat load 40 divided by 40 plus 10 equal to 0 0.8. So, 0 0.8 is the sensible heat factor is 0 0.8 is the correct answer. So, next question, a room having dimension of 5 by 5 by 3 meter contains air at 20 degrees Celsius and 100 kilo Pascal relative uh, at a relative humidity of 75 percent. The corresponding value of PS equal to 3.169 kilo Pascal, the partial pressure of dry air will be. There are four options given. So, the partial pressure of water vapor is P V equal to 5 relative humidity into P S 0 0.75 into 3.169 which is 2.3767 kilo Pascal. So, partial pressure of dry air equal to total pressure minus the vapor pressure 100 minus 2.3767 equal to 97.62 kilo Pascal. So, the answer is 98 kilo Pascal. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject. And I upload the video lectures of all the subject in the YouTube channel. Uh, you subscribe to the channel, use the videos for better learning. So, thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. If you have any queries, you can write to me. Uh, I will sincerely answer to your questions. We will meet again in another video lecture from the questions, solution to the questions of UPSC engineering service examination. Until then, 